you know, I just wanted to quickly go over two things, and, and you know, one of them is I just want to share why this technology inspires me so much. And the second one is, as Ajay mentioned, I want to give you a very practical framework for how to think about this day. You know, I'm a venture capitalist. I think my days probably look a lot like a lot of yours. I'll often take 10 to 15 meetings a day with people from various walks of life. I love to do research. I love to get up to speed in a bunch of different areas. I need to help my companies recruit, and so I try to pack a lot in. And I found a couple of years ago, I was just I was super overwhelmed. I was just trying to do too much. And I noticed over time that it just got a lot easier. And it didn't get easier because, you know, it isn't in large part, it was because of machine intelligence tools that I was using just to basically give myself secret superpowers. And I got to this point where I'm like, gosh, like if you stripped me of all these tools, like I couldn't survive in my job. So I was like, wait, wait a minute, you know, if I can't, as an individual knowledge worker, if I can't survive in my job without these tools anymore because they, they supercharge me so much, What's happening to the rest of enterprise and industry? It must be fundamentally transformed by this as well. And so I did what I do, which is, you know, I kind of go into a hole, just take a look at anything and everything that's happening in market today. And so what I'm going to show you right here is a visual overload. We'll make it all make sense. How many of you guys have seen this chart before? Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> you got a head start. So this is anything and everything that's happening in machine intelligence to date. So in the top left corner, you can see we have what we call agents. And so you can call them agents or bots, essentially what they are. Who's seen the movie Her? Okay, good. You've got a primer on this. Um, they're these conversational agents that can help you with a bunch of tasks. And so they're not at the point where you're going to fall in love with them yet. But, you know, our team alone uses it for things like we have bots that proactively go out and do research for us. We use it for, we use it for recruiting. We use it for scheduling. And so I've just put an example up here, which is, you know, there, there's this bot from a company called X.AI, and it performs a very simple task. It looks at your calendar, uh, and it has a language generation function. And once it knows that, if you just drop it into an email, it can actually schedule that meeting for you and, and do it as if it were a human. And so moving to the industries, this is one of the reasons, you know, I, I do what I do, is I, I really think machine intelligence has this incredible capacity for good. And Ajay mentioned a few of these examples. We're seeing it do incredible things in medicine. We're seeing, you know, these algorithmic techniques allow us to disperse loans to people who otherwise couldn't get credit within retail finance. But I'm going to talk just very quickly about a non-obvious industry for machine intelligence, and that's agriculture. So if you take a look at that tractor on the top left, this is technology from a company called Blue River. Uh, it might look like a normal tractor, but what it's actually doing is it's got these cameras on the front of the tractor. They're going over these lettuce plants, and it's actually taking a look at individual plants. And it knows when a plant is healthy, it knows when a plant is struggling, and it knows when a plant is not going to make it. And so it can make a decision in real time whether or not it, the plant needs pesticides, so you can now you know, not devote these resources where they're not needed. Um, and you can actually do plant thinning. If the plant's really not going to make it, why are we going to waste all these resources to trying to cultivate it? And so you end up getting the situation where you're able to improve crop yields in an automated and data-driven way. I really hope Canada can sort of double down and make sure it really fully benefits from all of this hard work that's gone into machine intelligence. And to that end, I hope this conference is the beginning of that conversation.